गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सो आर देयर एनी क्वेश्चंस डाउट्स हेलो सर या सर यस आई वुड लाइक टू आस्क वन डाउट सो इन द सर द फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ द कांटेक्ट मैकेनिक्स या व्हेन वी वर डूइंग सर दैट लैग्रांज मल्टीप्लायर मेथड फॉर बोथ द केसेस लाइक f is less than f star f is greater than f star like yeah. i am talking about the simple problem for that bar problem in which one gap was there yes yeah. so uh, for that sir uh, we formulated the integral functional took it variation and uh, we imposed one extra condition that is lambda greater than equal to 0 yeah. can you tell how that comes no actually uh, there is a logic behind that i think i have not discussed that but the Can, uh, the lambda is actually can be interpreted as a contact force so the contact force has to be positive or zero it cannot be uh, tensile basically you know it means that the contact force has to be compressive it cannot be tensile if the two bodies are in contact the contact force is going to be compressive and if they are separated the contact force would be zero but it cannot be tensile so that is the argument there is a mathematical justification also there but i have not discussed that but i think uh, for the timing you can think of uh, you know the contact force has to be compressive uh, so uh, the contact force we took as actually compressive force and therefore it has to be positive or zero okay sir sir and yes. like uh, in penalty method uh, we discussed that we take a big kp parameter which is a yeah. large number yeah so how we decide that sir like how much to take yeah so now what we actually do is uh, you know you look at the maximum diagonal element of the structural stiffness matrix uh, that usual stiffness matrix assembled stiffness matrix we have got and we look at the maximum diagonal element and about 1000 times of that a maximum diagonal element we take the penalty parameter so that usually works well okay sir yeah okay sir and one more thing i want to ask uh, yeah where uh, we were doing that uh, one example we did in last class in which we were taking two eight noted elements and then finding the gap yeah uh, so uh, we were getting an x n at Uh, normal on target and contractor to be at e- to be of equal and opposite sign yeah so but uh, it will not be true in general right uh, means because there is no contact still yeah actually so but why uh, when they will be in contact that time the normal on the two has to be equal and opposite so uh, even if they are not in contact we take that equal and opposite so we find the uh gap or whatever no in the common normal direction although you are right that when they are separated uh, the physical normal will not be actually uh, equal and opposite at uh, those points but we are taking them same so but like the logic which we use is that uh, you know on the contactor side we take one point so that yeah. is a fixed point and then we search on the target which point is closest to that yeah so uh, basically sir uh, it is not means it ma- might not be necessary that uh, you know that the way a vector which connects the two points uh, that uh, is normal to the contactor also means to target it will be but uh, to norm to contactor can we say that it will be normal always you yeah, know it you yeah, know it will not be you are right that it will not be Okay, sir. But yeah. in this case, it is coming. Yeah. Okay. So, any other question? Anybody? Okay. Then let me start. So we are going to continue the contact mechanics. So 
so yeah screen is not writing so let me just close and is my screen visible hello okay so yeah then we are continuing contact mechanics so last class we have discussed how to find the normal to the contactor normal to the target body and how to find out the uh gap between the uh, no point uh, no some point on the contactor body and what is the corresponding point on the target body closest to that and then we also have done how to find out the gap so now uh, more on that so now talking about uh, say the forces and then the b i uh, know the uh, virtual work and the big form etc so now if we look at the forces on the contact surfaces so uh, you know there can be traction on the surface so that is what we talk about so traction on the target body and traction on the contactor body so i am denoting the traction by a vector so underscore is a vector and superscript t for the target and superscript c for the contactor so this will be equal to uh, stress tensor that i am denoting by two uh, underscores and t for the target body and into normal to the target body so normal vector to the target body so if you multiply 3 by 3 stress matrix with the 3 by 1 uh, normal vector you will get the traction so if it is uh, the stress uh, tensor and normal are to the target body then you get traction on the target so this is the traction on target and similarly you know you get the traction on the contactor body which would be uh, stress on the contactor body into normal to the contractor body so if you do this you get the traction on the contact contactor so uh, now uh, most of the time we are interested actually in the normal uh, tractions so normal tractions so now if we look at the normal traction on the target body so if we take the traction on the target body that is t uh, you know this vector t and take its transpose so this superscript capital t is for transpose and multiplied with the uh, normal to the target we get the uh, tra normal traction on the target so this is the normal traction on the target and similarly you know if we take uh, we want to find out the normal force uh, normal traction uh, uh, although i'm denoting it by f but it is actually traction so if we take the traction vector on the contactor body it's transpose and multiply now you keep in mind here that as for, for the purpose of finding out the normal tractions we are taking the normal to the target body so that we are taking as a reference so normal to the target body we are taking even for the contactor so this is normal traction on the contactor and uh, for equilibrium uh, because uh, finally if you look at uh, uh, the area element we uh, take at the contact location will have zero thickness 
so for that the equilibrium equation uh, along the normal to the contact area would result in sum of the normal tractions on the target and contacted is equal to zero and uh, this is uh, we are taking uh, an actually the uh, normal force uh, normal to the uh, uh, to the surface and uh, towards the surface so for that i am taking this as minus fn so minus fn is equal to fnt and this is equal to minus fnc and this would be less than equal to zero so what i am trying to show here is that let us say this is the contactor body and this is the target body and uh, so we have uh, no at this point here we have this force on the normal force on the contactor and now if you look at the target body so this is the target body normal is nt and the force is also here is actually if you look at because fnt is taken as uh, uh no t trans tt transpose into nt and uh, uh fnc is taken as t tc transpose into nt so fnc would be towards the contactor body whereas when you look at the target body so fnt would be away from the target body as per these definitions what i have defined here so then i am taking no fnt as minus fn so it would actually be by in the negative direction fnt is going to be ultimately towards the target body so that is why it is taken as minus fn and fnc if you look at from this relationship is taken as fn because it is already towards the contactor so that is how you no know, these uh, uh, forces are taken so now we, so this is about the normal tractions so similarly we look at the tangential uh, tractions so similarly tangential tractions if we look at so tangential tangential tractions the equilibrium if you look at the tang, uh, tangential traction on the target plus tangential traction vector on the contactor this will be actually a null vector and uh, by definition we can say that uh, tangential traction on the target body would be equal to total traction on the target body at the point of interest minus the normal traction so magnitude b already know is fnt and the direction is along nt so we take this so this is tt minus fnt into nt will be tang tangential traction on target so this is tangential traction on target and similarly you know you want to define this uh, tangential traction on the contactor so that would be total traction on the contactor body and minus normal force on the contractor body into uh, now this because fnt and fnc are defined based on nt so i am using here again nt rather than nc and uh, that this quantity is defined as tangential traction on contactor so now of course uh, you yeah, know if the uh, contact is frictionless then the tangential tractions would be actually null vectors so if the contact is frictionless then the tangential traction on the target would be equal to tangential traction on the contactor equal to a null vector so this is about uh, you know the normal uh, tractions and the tangential tractions on the uh, contactor and target bodies 
so now next thing is uh, we want to develop the big form and uh, fi finally the uh, governing equations you know the finite element governing equation for the uh, contact uh, target and contactor bodies so now let's look at the uh, and uh, it can be done in two ways either using the lagrange multiplier so taking the contact force basically as a lagrange multiplier and the other approach is a penalty approach where we express the uh, contact force in terms of the penalty parameter and the relative tangent uh, normal displacement be between the target and contactor bodies so first we will discuss the lagrange multiplier approach so we are going to discuss the big form Uh, Lagrange multiplier. Sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, while writing FTC. Yeah. Uh, on the right hand side, we have taken the normal of uh, like target. Target. Yeah, yeah, right. So we are, uh, no, we are defining it like this. So we are defining it uh, with reference to the target body. So same thing. If you see over here, when I have defined the. Uh, normal tractions on the contactor here if you see i have taken this uh, normal to the uh, target body so we are taking uh, you know the normal to the target body as a ref reference and defining the normal tractions as well as, well as the transversal tractions in terms of that so we will uh, follow that consistently subsequently Uh, now, uh, what I am going to do is this big form is for the frictionless contact so that the tangential tractions are zero. So, uh, you know, both penalty as well as the Lagrange multiplier I will do based on that. So, contact is frictionless. Uh, for that case, uh, I am going to do this. So, now uh, we, we write, you no, know, let us separately the uh, basically the target body and contractor body separately so if we write the principle of virtual work so principle of virtual work for target body and uh, in this we are uh, going to assume that uh, the problem is a small deformation problem. It's not a finite deformation problem. So we are going to do for that. Uh, so a small deformation and bodies are individually, the target and the contractor bodies are linear elastic. So for that I will write. So now if I write the principle of virtual work, so, uh, because for a small deformation, see, we do not recognize the difference between the reference, uh, sir, uh, know the configuration and the current configuration. So, here uh, the superscript T is going to denote actually the target body, not the current configuration, because we do not distinguish between the reference configuration and the current configuration for the small deformation case. So, the principle of virtual work can be written as integration over volume of the target body. And I'm using the uh, void notation. So the strain tensor is written in the vector form. So epsilon strain tensor in the target body, it's transpose variation, of course. And then the stress is also written as a vector, a six by one vector dv. So this is the virtual work of stresses and is equal to the virtual work of external forces. So integration over volume and then the delta u on delta u of the target body it's transpose into body force on the target body and uh, dv plus uh, the uh, virtual work of traction so let us say the area on which traction on the target body is acting is denoted as a subscript capital t superscript small t and then into delta u t uh, transpose capital T superscript capital T is for transpose into traction on the target body dA and uh, then we have uh, know the work done by the normal force the contact is frictionless so the tangential force is zero 
but there is a normal force and if you see we have taken the normal force on the target body as minus fn uh, and uh, of course the uh, displacement to the uh, target body is along nt nt is away from the body so fn is towards the body uh, minus fn is towards the body so therefore the virtual work of minus fn is going to be negative so we will have minus integration over the contact area a subscript c is for the contact area and into delta un uh, that is delta unt into fn da so here you will see fn is uh, minus fn is towards the body and delta unt is uh, away from the body so therefore uh, I uh, know the virtual work of the normal force is actually negative over here. And here if you look at how do we define U and T. So you would see here that U and T normal uh, displacement on, uh, on the target body will be uh, transpose of the normal to the target body. So NT uh, N superscript small t transpose into displacement of the target body. So same way you know when you write delta of u and t so that would be nt transpose into delta of u ut. So this is the uh, virtual work I mean this is the expression for the virtual work for the uh, target body and similarly we write the uh, virtual work for the contactor body. So if I write the contactor body. So the contactor body virtual work of stresses. So integration over volume, total volume of the contactor body. So delta of epsilon uh, C uh, transpose sigma C stress uh, in the contactor body will be equal to the virtual work of external forces. So body forces and the uh, contactor body so integration over volume delta u c uh, transpose into body force in the contactor body into dv plus uh, traction forces so area on which the traction is acting on the contactor body and delta u c transpose into traction on the contactor body into da and uh, now, now the additional term would be virtual work of normal force. So if you see over here, FNC is equal to you know, this minus FN is equal to minus FNC. So FNC is equal to FN. And FNC is towards the uh, contactor body as you see this arrow over here, you no, know, this one, this arrow as you see. And uh, if you see UNT, uh, sorry, the UNC, is also defined in the same direction because UNC we are going to define based on NT and NT will be towards the uh, you know the contactor body. So the virtual work of normal force on the contactor body would be positive. So we will have here plus the integration over the contact area. AC is the contact area into delta UNC into FNDA. And here uh, uh, if you see, so this uh, UNC is uh, defined based on the normal to the target body, so NT transpose into UC. And so also delta UNC will be equal to NT transpose. So as I said at the beginning that we are using this normal to the target body as a reference normal and expressing the quantities in terms of this. So it would be delta of UC. So this is the uh, virtual work for the uh, contactor body. Now if we write the combined virtual work that is both the bodies together. Although uh, no, later the finite element equations we are going to develop are going to be for the individual bodies but I just want to demonstrate also the combined weak form. So combined uh, weak form will be 
uh, now the integration of both the uh, integration over both the uh, uh, volumes of both the bodies so in, uh, integration over v and now i am not distinguishing whether it is target or contractor so the strain tensor so delta of epsilon uh, transpose into sigma dv so this will be of course the integration over the uh, contractor body plus integration over the target body so it is going to be both so it is written as basically the total integral and then similarly for the virtual work of body forces and traction forces so virtual work of body forces so delta u transpose into simply fb dv plus the virtual work of uh, uh, traction so area over that tra area over which the traction is acting so delta u uh, transpose into tda and these are actually the sum of integrations over the target body plus the integration over the contractor body and uh, the last two terms will be right no these two terms be right so this term and this term so this i am going to write here as minus integration over the contact area and then delta u n t minus delta u n c into f n d a so you can write the uh, the combined big form in this manner and as i have already said this is the contact area so uh, now if you look at uh, there is an additional condition uh, that is we have to make sure that uh, uh, the two bodies target and contactor bodies do not penetrate uh, one inside the other so there is an additional condition so this is uh, no normal virtual work we have written and combine the two together so additionally uh you know we need to satisfy what is known as impenetrability constraint we need to satisfy impenetrable that is one body cannot penetrate inside the other impenetrable impenetrability constraint so that constraint is that if we take the displacement normal displacement to of the target body minus the normal displacement to the contactor body so this must be less than equal to zero so if you look at the unt is away from the target body and unc is towards the target body because it is defined based on nt and nt is towards the uh, sorry towards the contactor body so unt is away from the target body and unc is towards the contactor body because it is defined based on nt and nt is towards the contactor body so when we take this unt minus unc so this must be less than equal to 0 uh, because no we are both are pointing towards the contactor body so the contactor body displacement always has to be basically greater than equal to unt so that this impenetrability constraint would be satisfied so now if we look at the combined weak form so there has to be an additional term to satisfy this impenetrability constraint so there would be an additional term so additional term and please make note of so these uh, some of the sign conventions are different from what is given actually in the uh, asgarvatti book uh because uh, some of the things are not consistent in that so to make the things consistent i have made use of you know some slight changes in the definition of fnt and fnc particularly and then uh, the subsequent uh, expressions uh what i have written so you should make a note of that difference no you should not think that i have made some mistake so it is deliberate to make the things consistent so additional term in in the big form
will be uh, basically integration over of course the contact area and the impenetrability constraint is that unt minus unc and this is uh, as we said already here that this is less than equal to zero uh, so we multiply by the uh, virtual change in the normal force and which is actually taken as positive so delta fn is positive so therefore this integral will again be less than equal to zero because unt minus unc is less than equal to zero so now if we look at the final weak form for both target and contactor bodies together so finally the weak form so i keep in mind here that delta fn is actually positive you now this delta fn what i have written here and that is why you know this uh, integral is and uh, less than equal to zero so finally the weak form for the contact problem becomes you know the combined weak form if we look at so that is an uh, an inequality so uh, the combined weak form you can write we have to basically add what we have just done over here so what are i have written over here in this we will have to add basically this term and then uh, we will have the uh, total weak form for the combined system so that would be integration again over uh, total volume that is volume of the uh, target plus contactor body a sigma dv minus so let us take these terms to the all terms to the left hand side so delta u uh, transpose into fb body forces dv minus the traction virtual work of traction so delta u transpose into tda and then we have plus know that uh, we take when we take uh, this term to the left hand side it becomes plus so i am going to write this first so we will have plus integration over the contact area and then delta unt minus delta unc into fn da so that is one term and then additional term we are getting from the impenetrability constraint so that is integration over ac and then we have unt minus unc and uh, into delta fn da and because of this term this term is less than equal to zero so the whole thing becomes less than equal to zero so if you look at uh, basically this is an inequality as i have already said that uh, you now the total weak form for the whole body is an inequality and actually you know you can look at these two terms can be combined together so you can see that this uh, this can be written as delta of integration over the contact area unt minus unc into fn da and uh, you would see that this fn is nothing but lagrange multiplier and whose interpretation is a normal contact force lagrange multiplier so now uh, yeah, let us develop the element level governing equation for separately for both the bodies that is the uh, target body as well as the contactor body so that is what i am going to do next so uh, although i have written the combined weak form uh, combining the imp uh, impenetrability constraint and everything but i will be writing the uh, element level governing equation separately for the uh, target body separately for the contractor body and then we will be writing separately this inequality constraint this constraint we will be writing separately in the uh, in the form of element level uh, equation so next is uh, this element level governing equation so make 
so now uh, we you, you know need to write the finite element approximations so as you already know let's say take a general 3d case that target and contactor bodies are uh, 3d bodies so the displacements either in the target or the contactor bodies vector u would be uh, this interpolation matrix which i am denoting as n uh, and, uh, double underscore and into d is the uh, displacement uh, elemental displacement vector so the variation of uh, u would be delta u would be equal to uh, this n into delta uh, d so now if you put superscript t then it becomes for target if you put superscript uh, uh, c then it becomes for the contactor body and similarly we need to interpolate the normal force so fn is also a function of uh, basically the uh, coordinate along the uh, uh, along the contact uh, area, coordinates along the contact area. So that is, let us say, in terms of another set of say function for interpolating Fn. So that is Nf is another set of say function into F, that vector F. And the inter, uh, no, the variation of Fn will be equal to then this Nf into delta F. So here, if you look at this, D uh, will be for the 3D, as I said, would be U1, V1, W1, depending on how many nodes you have in the element. So like that, it will be, uh, that is what the vector D is. And vector F, uh, which is uh, used to define the normal traction on the uh, target and contactor body. So it would be F1, F2, F3 and so on depending on how many nodes uh, we have along the contact area so that's the transpose of uh, this quantity now if you look at uh, a bit more about the this interpolation of, for the uh, normal force this one so and now if the problem is a 2d problem so then the contact is going to be a line contact for 2d problems uh, uh, that's what now i'm saying that problem is a 2D problem so then the contact is uh, up, although there can be face to face contact and in that case also it can be the contact area can be uh, uh, three, uh, 2D I mean can be an area but let me say so let me say that the contact is 1, 1D, uh, 1D curve so if the contact is 1D curve uh, so in that case no, we want to look at NF so the contact would be like this and let us say the corresponding elements we are using in the uh, target and contactor bodies are let us say uh, quadrat quadratic elements so then uh, know the uh, yeah, you know we will discretize the whole uh, contact curve yeah, using uh, three noded elements so locally let us say these are the node numbers one two three and this is the high coordinate so uh, this will be one contact element one then uh, this will be contact element two this will be contact element three like this you will have and you already know that say functions n n1 would be one by two into jai into one minus jai and uh, n2 would be one minus jai square and n3 will be one by two into jai into one plus jai so these will be the safe function and if you look at the NF for this case, so NF is we are writing for one element. So NF will simply be N1, N2, N3. And of course, if you are discretizing the target and contact uh, body is using four noded elements, then the uh, uh, along the contact curve, we will have two noded elements and accordingly we will have just only N1 and N2. So this will be NF for if the contact is 2D, 1D curve. Now let us say if contact is a uh, 2D surface. So second possibility is that contact is 2D surface. So which is possible if the target and contact bodies are 3D bodies and then the contact is over an area or even if the target and contacts are uh, 2D uh, bodies, uh, no, they are dis discretized as 2D bodies, idealized as two dimensional plane stress, plane strain problems, but the contact is along their in-plane surfaces. So then also the contact would be a, a 2D surface. And let us say the parent elements are discretized using 20 noded brick elements. Then the uh, contact surface 
will be discretized using eight uh, nodal elements. So in this case, if you look at the NF, the NF I have written over here. No, this N NF. I uh, know in this interpolation, if you see what I have written over here, so that NF will be given by for the this case as N1, N2, N3, and uh, up to N8, eight node. I mean, uh, depends upon the problem. Uh, 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 basic discretization. Hello, class. So now, of course, if the bodies are discretized, you know, they using eight noded brick elements, uh, then the contact surface will be discretized using four noded quadrilateral elements, and then NF will be N1, N2, N3, N4. But if the uh, the target and contactor bodies are discretized using 20 noded quadratic brick elements. Then the contact surface will be discretized using eight noded quadratic element. And this will be in that case, uh, your NF. So this is now, uh, as far as now, when I look at the, uh, basically the individually, the virtual work for the target and contactor bodies. So you already know how to, from this, how do we get the stiffness matrix for the target body? And from this term, how do we get the, uh, that's the standard procedure to get the load vector from the body forces, load vector from the traction forces. So I'm going to mainly uh, demonstrate you how to write basically, you know, this term. And this, you know, you can, uh, I presume that you can write uh, as a standard uh, uh, procedure for, you know, for the terms in the stiffness matrix coming from this term, the load vector coming from this term, load vector coming from this. So I will be concentrating on uh, this term uh, and uh, you know, for the uh, target body and similarly this term for the contractor body and also we have written this uh, uh, no, we, I will also be concentrating on basically you know, this term so for the target body separately UNT delta Fn and for the contractor body minus UNC into delta Fn so I am going to write uh, discuss these terms separately over here in the finite element approximations so let me uh, basically talk of the first term. So integration over the contact area. So you have UNT into delta Fn uh, dA. So first basically what I'm looking at is, uh, no basically no first I'm looking at this term. So what you have is a UNT into delta Fn term. This term I'm looking at. So uh, if I want to look at this term, so now uh, no, you can write this as, uh, uh, because variation is with respect to normal force, so we take that on the uh, left hand side. So I write this as integration over the contact area, delta Fn. And finally, no, we are going to write this in the form of matrix vector products. So I can write it as actually transpose into UNT, although individually they are scalar. So whether you write transpose or without transpose and the same thing, but for the matrix vector multiplication consistency, we are writing it as transpose. And now if you look at uh, delta Fn, so we have already written here that delta Fn is given by this expression. So delta Fn transpose would be uh, transpose of this vector into uh, delta F transpose into NF transpose. So from there you can write uh, this term as integration over the contact area and then this would be delta F uh, transpose into NF uh, transpose and then UNT and if you recall now we have defined UNT if you look at the UNT uh, we have defined uh, somewhere uh, yeah so let us see yeah here now if you look at this UNT UNT is defined as this NT transpose into UT and UT is of course N into DT. So we can write uh, UNT as NT transpose into N uh, into DT. So that is what we are going to write that term. So this will be the delta Fn then UNT is N NT transpose into N. We are assuming that the interpolation matrix is same for the target and contactor body. So I'm not putting any subscript in that. And into DT, DA.
Uh, Professor Moli, actually, I'm having class. So, yeah, so this is uh, what you can write. So, finally, uh, this is independent of the uh, basically the integration area. Similarly, this is independent of the integration area. So, we can take out of the integration sign. So, we can write this as delta F transpose integration over the contact area and then we have this nf transpose and then we have this nt transpose into n and uh, in da so this is going to be a matrix and into this side you will have finally this dt so now we can write this as delta f uh, transpose and this is the contact stiffness for the target body so i'm denoting that by uh, kct uh, and it's a matrix so double underscore and into dt kct is given by this this is your kct so this is referred to as a uh, contact stiffness matrix So now, uh, similarly, if I look at the other term I was talking about, so this is one term, uh, you know, in this, so what I said, uh, basically, uh, this UNT into delta FN, now let me now look at uh, this term for the uh, contact target body, this one, delta UNT into FN, this term, what would be the form of this at element level, so let's look at now that term. So, this is integration over the contact area AC into we have delta UNT into FNDA. And uh, the delta UNT can be replaced by its transpose. So, we can write it as delta UNT transpose into FNDA. And then we can write these in terms of interpolation. So, integration over contact area. Then UNT, as I said, K, you know, uh, delta UNT is NT transpose into N into delta D. So we will have first in the transpose delta D uh, for the target body, it's for the target body. So delta D transpose into N uh, transpose. And then last we will have uh, uh, this NT transpose transpose will become NT. So we will have this NT. And then of course FN and FN is this NF into FDA. So the uh, vector of uh, you know, the elemental degrees of freedom we can take out of the integration sign. So we can take uh, delta DT transpose on the left hand side, then integration over contact area. Then you have N transpose into this N transpose, uh, no, yeah, NT into this we will have NF and DA. And then this is vector F this side. And this is uh, basically is defined as if you see delta DT uh, transpose and this is KCT. It's the same matrix, but it is transpose. If you look at what we have got over here, uh, this KCT. So the, 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 there we have got just the transpose of this. So we can write this as basically, you know, KCT uh, transpose into F, uh, no, the single underscore with F because it's a vector. So this is uh, what you have. And now, now this, let us do the similar thing for the contactor body. So now for the contactor body, if you look at, so what I'm going to do for the contactor body, we will use UNC. So we have UNC term yeah. for the, yeah. Uh, so the second term, what we have calculated, that is figuring in the weak form. The first one, UNT into delta F, and uh, that why we have computed, sir. Yeah, that is coming in the impenetrability constraint. So if you look at, yeah, the second term is coming in the weak form. Uh, but if you look at the first term, I have calculated, it is coming in this inequality, this particular in inequality, which is to satisfy the impenetrability. That is, target and contactor bodies cannot penetrate uh, one inside the other. So the second term, the first term I have calculated actually for, for writing down this particular 
uh, constrain in the element level form okay okay i think later we will be using that yeah yeah we will be using that okay, yes okay, okay. Yeah. So now, now coming to the target body, so we have UNC. So UNC, uh, by definition, we have already defined when I was writing the virtual work for the contractor body. So that was NT uh, transpose into UC we have written. And uh, I am going to just do a little trick over here. So bring, uh, to bring in some form of actually, you know, the uh, relationship between the various stiffness matrices we are getting. So I'm going to write here NT as minus NC. So this will be equal to minus NC uh, transpose into and UC is of course uh, the uh, interpolation matrix N into uh, elemental degrees of freedom for the contactor body DC. So this is uh, so similarly if you look at delta UNC, so delta UNC then will be minus uh, uh, this NC uh, transpose into N into delta DC. That, that's the state forward. And uh, we already know this, that uh, Fn is nothing but the interpolation matrix for the contact force into elemental uh, contact force vector F. And delta Fn is, of course, uh, this NF into delta F. So now let me uh, look at the, uh, uh, know this particular term, which we have in the in, in, uh, impenetrability constraint over here, this term. So we are having know this uh, minus UNC into delta Fn. So let me look at this term now first, and then the uh, term which appears in the big form uh, that I will to, uh, take next. So we have this as minus integration over the contact area and then we have delta Fn uh, transpose. I am rewriting that expression, UNC dA. And so this can be written as minus, I am writing outside integration over contact area. And then delta Fn uh, transpose can be written as delta F uh, transpose into NF transpose. Uh, and then we have UNC, UNC is written over over here, as you see, this is your UNC. So that would be minus uh, NC transpose into N into DC DA. So this is what we have. And minus minus, now if you look at this minus and this minus, the minus minus big, big will become plus. So this can be written as now delta of F transpose, we can take out of the integration sign on the left hand side. And then we have this integration over the contact area. And then we have this uh, NF transpose and into NC, uh, that's the subscript. So we have this uh, NC transpose and then we have this N DA and then DC, you no, know, we are taking out on the right hand side. So this is DC. And so this can be written as delta of F uh, transpose. And now this is for the contactor body. So this we are denoting as matrix KCC and into DC. That is what and KCC is basically, you know, this matrix what I have written over here. Now, now let's look at that term which is appearing in the, uh, you know, the uh, big form for the contactor body. So let me consider this minus integration over uh, contact area and then delta UNC uh, transpose into FNDA. This term appears in the virtual work of contactor body. So this we can write because we already know that UNC is in terms of minus NC. You know, if you look at uh, over here. So UNC is already minus NC transpose into NDC. So that minus minus, no, this minus which we have here and you can see that minus sign can be cancelled out. So we can write this integration as integration over the contact area and then delta of DC transpose into N transpose and then NC transpose transpose will become NC 
So we will have NC and then of course from FN we will have this NF and into FDA. So these terms now delta DC uh, transpose we can take on the uh, basically left hand side and F on the right hand side. So we can write this term as delta uh, DC transpose integration and in this matrix integration over the contact area and then, then we have this N transpose into NC subscript C. I am just, just uh, yeah, then C and then we have this NF DA, so this matrix and into F we have there. And now if you compare, know what we have got over here, so this matrix is just, just transpose of that. So you can write this as delta of uh, DC. I think uh, DC I am writing as superscript. So yeah, this is superscript. So we will have delta DC transpose and then we will have this KCC or transpose into F. So this is what we have these terms. So now once we actually define these terms, uh, then we can write the element level Gaon equation for the target for the contractor and the constraint condition. So now let me write element level governing equations so first first let's say the target body so the target body first term now we will have the virtual work of stresses so that will give us the stiffness matrix of the target body so kt and displacement elemental displacement vector of the target body dt we will have and then we'll have, you know, uh, we have that contact uh, term. So if you look at for the target body, I have written over here, this term delta UNT into FN. So this is giving rise to basically, you know, delta DT transpose goes out. So we will have, you know, basically this term. So this will be there in the element level Gaon equation. If you look at the big form for the target body, I have written. So this term uh, we are writing on the uh, left hand side. So we will have this KC contact stiffness for the target body it's transpose into F. And we will have usual body force uh, vector by element level force vector for the body forces coming from the body forces. So that is uh, FB. Let me put uh, actually, you know, E over here that these forces are for the element. So TE plus uh, uh, from the traction. So FT and this is for the target body and at the element level. So this is the element level governing equation for the target element on the target body. And this will be for the element which is. Hello, where are we class seven? And see this, uh, if you look at this, so here this is the, this term is going to be there only if the target element is, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the contact region. So one of the edge of the uh, element is actually touching the contact region and that, that is what this contribution is going to be there. If the element is away from the contact region, then it would be simply KTDT equal to FBTE plus FTTE. Uh, super skip this T is for the target and E is for the element that is the element level load vectors. So similarly, if you look at the contactor, so for the contactor, we will have the contactor stiffness matrix KC into element level uh, uh, degrees of freedom vector DC for the uh, contactor body. And then we will have the, this, uh, the other term we have got is this KCC for the contact stiffness for the, uh, you know, this coming from delta UNC into FN in the virtual work that term taking to the uh, left hand side, we get this into F and this will be equal to FB for the contactor body at element level uh, load vector plus FT for the contactor body at element level. So this is the element level Gaon equations. Now if we look at additionally, so additional constraint which we have over here, 
if you look at no the additional constraint is this constraint so we also have to look at this so this is delta fn transpose into unt minus unc and first set of terms i wrote when i started with the target body so i actually wrote this term so this constraint also has to be written so this constraint can also be written as no so if you look at the addition also this is a eliminable governing equation for an element uh, in the target body adjoining to the contact tray region and this is the eliminable governing equation for an element in the contactor body adjoining to the contact region so this is that equation and additionally we have this constraint equation so the additional constraint condition is uh, now we have i know if you look at uh, the kind of first set of terms i have written over here so if you look at uh, this one so delta f transpose will be taken out uh, out because that is arbitrary so we will have this term kct in, uh, into dt that's the first term and then you have minus uh, basically this uh, 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 delta fn uh, transpose into unc so finally that is equal to delta f transpose into kcc into dc so delta f we are taking out because that is arbitrary so uh therefore this uh, these two terms together will give rise to this inequality constraint so kct into dt plus uh, kcc into dc and this is equal to uh, less than equal to a null vector so finally uh, these are the equations so how you will be solving it so you can ultimately uh, you will introduce the slack variables to write this inequality into inequality constraints and then multiplied by vector f transpose and add to the integral functional which will be uh, coming from this equation and this equation and then you would be solving this as an optimization problem so this is the element level governing equation which uh, we get uh, uh, you know for the contact problem based on lagrange multiplier approach so lagrange multiplier means we are taking here the vector you know the fn as an independent uh, uh, variable and we are interpolating it so there is a corresponding degree of, degree of freedom corresponding to that f is coming over here so this is the element level governing equation uh, i think uh, no i want to stop over here and you know if you have any doubts and questions no you can ask sir yeah for the element level governing equation yeah are only useful for the element that, that are in contact or for the whole body uh yeah so now if you look at uh, uh, basically uh, if you look at you no know, as far as this term is concerned this term is concerned this term is concerned these will be there for any element of the target body yes sir yes and this additional term would be there if that uh, element of the target body is in uh, uh, in the contact region so then this term is going to be there so similarly when you look at the elements of the contactor body so if the uh, uh, that particular element in the contactor body is in the contact region then this term would be there otherwise only this term and this term and this term will be there and reason additional inequality constraint Yes. First, 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 we have to separate out the element. Two are in contact and two are not in contact. Yeah, right. Yeah, if that has to be done. Yes. Then we have to apply to differential equation for the element yeah. level governing equation for the element. Yeah, right. And then of course after this you have to do the assembly of all these equations and then the solution of all those steps will be there. Okay, okay, sir. Yeah. So. kcc or kct for the no, not in contact are zero yeah That's they right. will be no, yeah, null matrices hello yeah sir like we have taken two different um, matrices like nf and n yeah so nf like we are assuming that curved surface like we are approximating it using either three nodes for 1d and eight nodes for 2d surface yeah right 
so, so sir, how to find the Kaplan? Uh, for that also, are we using three noded element or are we using two noded? No, no. Element? For that, we will be using let's say, uh, I know that uh, capital N would be based on uh, if it is a contact curve is 2D, so more likely that uh, parent elements are 2D elements. So that would be based on either four noded or uh, no, uh, or eight noded uh, element. So then N would be the interpolation of uh, uh, UV and W or U and V depending on the problem. And then there would be corresponding uh, N interpolation matrix N based on that element. So more likely for this case, that would be an eight noted element. So N will be for this case, N will be based on eight noted element. For as NF is based on three noted element in the contact curve. Okay. And yeah, you no know, similarly if the uh, you know the contact and target elements are 3D elements, let's say 20 noted brick element. So then N would be based on that 20 uh, 20 safe functions interpolating UVW3 displacements, whereas NF is based on you know, the uh, 8 noded uh, sur surface element uh, uh, as you see over here, 2D surface element. Okay, sir. Yes. So in case of 3D, uh, like we have the 2D surface contact, that that is why NF has 8 components. Yeah, NF has eight components. And, and in case of 2D figure, we have a line contact. So that's yeah. why we, we will be taking three components. Okay. Yeah, right, right. And, yeah. And one more thing, sir, uh, like for the major syllabus. Yeah. So will pre minor uh, part also come in the exam or will it be only the yeah, post minor? Some, yeah, they will have, you uh, know, the total uh, syllabus will be part of basically major, but uh, weightage of. Uh, Syllabus covered after minor would be more in the major, and what is of syllabus covered before minor would be less in the major. Okay, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Any any other question? Anybody has any doubt? Actually, this is you know not a difficult topic. You no, know, if you follow logically, so if you have any doubts and question, you no, know, you can ask. Any step anywhere you have any doubts, you can ask. So this NF, uh, instead of this even eight noted, we can choose a different uh, interpolation also, no? like for even a 2D contact surface. So this we are uh, assuming like a U1, U2 uh, kind of things are there, but there if degrees of freedoms are more, so we may have to, like we can use even more than eight uh, shape functions or less than eight also. Yeah, you can do that, yes. Okay, this is for a typical like, uh, I mean, uh, example. Yeah, I have, just, yeah, I have just taken so. some example. Uh, you can have lesser number, you can have more number of uh, okay. actually in say functions and the corresponding nodes. Okay. Any other question? Any Sir, uh, if you want to change the number of no, uh, node in the contact surface, then yeah, if it... Uh, necessary to change the 3d element like we are taking 20 noted brick element so we, so corresponding to that on the surface there are eight node per element yeah so if we want to change the eight noted to four four noded or even more like nine, nine noted element then we have to change the 3d element as well or uh, not uh, actually uh, it would be easier if we change the 3d element also but without changing that also we can do we can have say four noted element rather than eight noted element, but slightly when you write the element level governing equations, so that would be a bit more complex because okay. when you are writing the virtual work, let's say for the target body, so in that element you will have many contact elements. So yeah. when you are writing the uh, uh, this, you know the contact force, uh, you will be combination of many elements of uh, either four noted or three noted kind of things. So you can do that, but it would be more complex in writing the element level governing equations for the target and contractor bodies. Yeah. Any other question, anybody? Okay, so if there are no questions, I'm stopping. Thank you all for your attention. I will again say that please go through this, this derivation and if you have any doubts, you can ask also in the next question, the next class. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you, sir. Okay.